for good wine for us. So our worship is all in the bulletin this morning. Makes it a little easy for our special celebration. Um, we are celebrating. Then we can gather here as a bunch of, can I say this, sinners <laughs> who know that we can't stop our march towards the grave. But we come here because the risen one has forgiven us and he makes us his saints. So that's a lot to celebrate in all saints. And part of our tradition that is with many churches is we also give God thanks uh, for those in our church family that he called home to himself in this past year. That's part of our worship. And another third thing that's wonderful this morning is uh, Bob and Alice Smith are beginning their uh, tenure among us, and uh, Bob is going to help us with our welcome. So this is his probably only chance to stand before you as a preacher, which he would love to do every week, but I'm not going to let him. <laughs> but Bob's going to stand before us just to introduce himself and share his heart a little bit so that we can also you know, partner with him and what, what God is leading him to do here at Concordia. So much to celebrate today. Let us stand and uh, open our... Uh, we're going to open them. We'll go right on the front page of our hymnal for all the front, front page of our uh, service here for all the saints. God bless your worship. Son, he has named us the very children of God. 
as a called and ordained servant of Christ by his authority. I forgive you all your sin in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.
controlled by your sexual urges like the Gentiles who don't know God. No one should mistreat or take advantage of their brother or sister in this issue. The Lord punishes people for all these things as we told you before and sternly warned you. God didn't call us to be immoral but to be wholly dedicated to him. Therefore, whoever rejects him Excuse me, therefore, whoever rejects these instructions isn't rejecting a human authority. They are rejecting God, who gives his Holy Spirit to you. You don't need us to write about loving your brothers and sisters because God has already taught you to love each other. In fact, you are doing loving deeds for all the brothers and sisters throughout Macedonia. Now we encourage you, brothers and sisters, to do so even more. Aim to live quietly, mind your business, and earn your own living, just as I told you. That way you'll behave appropriately toward outsiders, and you won't be in need. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Beatitudes, promising us God's good care. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the fifth chapter. Glory to you, o Lord. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up a mountain and sat down. His disciples came to him, and Jesus began to teach them. Blessed are those who recognize they are spiritually helpless. The kingdom of heaven belongs to them. Blessed are those who mourn. They will be comforted. Blessed are those who are gentle. They will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for God's approval. They will be satisfied. Blessed are those who show mercy. They will be treated mercifully. Blessed are those whose thoughts are pure. They will see God. Blessed are those who make peace. They will be called God's children. Blessed are those who are persecuted for doing what God approves of. The kingdom of heaven belongs to them. Blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, lie, and say all kinds of evil things about you because of me. Rejoice and be glad because you have a great reward in heaven. The prophets who lived before you were persecuted in these ways. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. Instead of us speaking the Greek, let's sing it here. Poetic Seven. He'd take two steps back so the bus would go by and then he'd go home and tell his mother, ah, the bus didn't come. <laughs> and the mother forgot that she had given him money. And so he could spend it someplace else. And so he looked, he had to go a few times to Sunday school to make him look good. 
Yeah, but he didn't like Sunday school because when he went to Sunday school, he sat in a Sunday school class with all kinds of Christian kids that went to their parochial school and knew all the answers. So when they asked this little boy, who is Jesus or who is Mary and so forth, he had no clue. And I, I, sadly, some of the other kids kind of laughed at him. But he knew he had to go to Sunday school once in a while, especially when to go at Christmas, because they get Christmas presents. And one of the presents that they gave was a prayer that uh, they could put on the wall, they put it on the wall uh, on the opposite side of the room, and it glowed in the night. So he played games with his eyes. Is that still glowing? And he learned that prayer. And for those of you who have not guessed, that little boy from across the street was Bobby Smith. And he was able to share that prayer and say that prayer now for about 70 years. And over and over, he has said that every day. Bless Savior dear, be always near, keep me from evil, harm, and fear. He changed that a little bit over the years. He said, bless Savior dear, be always near, keep me, and keep all. If it was good for some me, it was good for everybody else. So I said, keep me and keep all. And I slipped that in there. So that was the beginning of what I uh, became in, uh, becoming a Christian. And even the fact that the Sunday school teacher found out that I had been baptized. So guess what? I can remember my baptism. You probably can if you were uh, a baby when you were baptized. But that has influenced me, and I've been sealed to Jesus Christ and all that he has done for these many years. And during those years, uh, I also moved from that house that was across the street and moved to a different town over a weekend. My father came home and said, uh, we're moving. And all of a sudden, I was going to a school someplace else. Well, in that time range of 20 years before I came back to see if I could find that family, I went to a youth conference for young uh, high school kids. And at the conference, they talked about uh, Isaiah 6. And it was this call for Isaiah 6. And in it, they talked about the majesty of God and the mercy of God and the mission of God. And at the end of the weekend, they, they asked it now, uh, for those who don't know, they, in that section, they talked about uh, God asking who will go for us. And so they asked this group of young people, now who would go for you? Who would go and send, be sent? And I raised my hand like a windshield wiper and said, I'll go. I didn't have anything else to do. So uh, I ended up, and I didn't realize at that time how far God was going to send me. And for those who don't know, I have been sent around the world to share the gospel to many people variety of cultures around the world. And I wouldn't have done this without a lovely wife who would also say, yes, I'll go with you. So she has been blessed in them. We have two boys, and, and they spent some time on the mission field. So we started out in Frankenmuth, Michigan, and serving the Lord there. And from there, we went to Hong Kong, and then back to the sem, I became a pastor, I was a teacher at the beginning, and all the years then, the Lord has used us uh, in Nigeria, West Africa, in South Korea, and uh, back to uh, or to uh, Indonesia, and then since we retired, we have been traveling around the world, uh, speaking, and both of us, Alice and I, have the, the joy of sharing God's love that you, your, your pastor shares with you. Now, think about, I haven't shared yet the text that I would like to share. And if you were uh, able to share something to your 
family or to your children or grandchildren, what passage would you share with them so that you leave a legacy and they remember uh, your Christian faith? What would that be? And I have selected one of my favorite passages, and it is, are you, there it is. First Thessalonians 5, 16, and 18. Instructions from Paul on how to live. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. That's instructions I have tried to take to heart as we moved around. Now, you have to understand the context in which Paul is telling his people in Thessalonica. And again, one of the key words that uh, describe this Thessalonians and the people of what was going on is the word persecution. Now think of that compared to what he just tells these people. They're suffering persecution. Now that's, and they, Paul turns around and says, rejoice, pray, give thanks for your life. Now think about your situation. I've been around the world and I have met people that have really been persecuted. We really are not persecuted here in the States. Even though it seems like it's coming sooner and then later. But think, I've known people that have suffered physical harm. I talked to pastors in uh, Vietnam and Thailand and Laos that have handcuffs scars of being arrested and so forth for preaching the gospel and sharing their faith. Right? We had a person that was in our house church in Indonesia that uh, was a Muslim and his father sent him to England. He got involved with the navigators in England while he was going to the university and he was sent home and some other Muslim found out. He went home and his father says, now you are either a believer in Jesus Christ or uh, you're a faithful Muslim. And if you believe in Jesus Christ, you're out of here. So that, that night he picked up his backpack and walked through the Khyber Pass in uh, Kabul and uh, for three days to get through. I don't know if you know what the Khyber Pass is, but it's not good. And he got to Pakistan. He recovered after he was in a church there, and he went out the next day. He looked on the newspaper that was on the newsstand, and he saw his picture. Under it said, wanted dead or alive by his father. Now, you haven't suffered very much in your life concerning Christianity. But I have known people that have. And I'm saying to you that Paul is telling you to rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances. Doesn't mean just the good ones. Now, one of the things that God, or Paul is saying to you is to pray without ceasing on. When you think of joy and rejoicing and giving thanks and doing things, how, it's almost impossible. How can you do that in your life? Well, if you think of the definition of prayer, now it's a conversation with, a joyful conversation, and I should say in the relationship with the triune God. Now the reason why I say triune God, I used to just say God. It's a joyful conversation with God. Well, when I started thinking about it, the Muslims could say that same thing. So now when I talk to a Muslim, you know, when I do that, by the way, they all say, yes, I would love to have you pray for me. I will offer I'd like to pray for you. Could I pray for you? And then I would say, well, now I'm going to go to the Lord and I'm going to pray in the name of the triune God. They don't believe in the triune God. So that's why I include that. So it opens the door for me to talk about Jesus. But the joy of knowing that definition and just little things like that. And plus, there are four parts to prayer. One is you speak. Now, most of you speak. 
and, and talk, and you even take a course in high school about how to speak, and then you end up, so that's the first part. God, the Holy Spirit, is already working in your life if you have a relationship with Him. So one of the first things you do in prayer is speak, even, even through your thoughts. Uh, and you can speak. <coughs> now as you speak, then who is listening? In the conversation, the opposite person listens. Well, God is listening to you. Isn't that amazing? And that's where the power of God came. Because all of a sudden, a million people are praying at the same time. And guess what? He's listening to each one of us at the same time. And I've been in groups, especially in South Korea, they pray out loud. You have 100 people in the group, and everybody prays out loud in some other language. I had trouble concentrating when I was with the South Koreans because they prayed out loud. And everybody was very emotional about it too. And they, you know, some would be shouting and so forth and I couldn't break. But God can understand each one of, the, of us at the same time with all the names of Bob Smiths around. Uh, I'm glad he picks me out and he can understand me. The second, uh, that was, uh, again, listening is the power of prayer. The third thing is God speaks. Well, how does he speak? Well, he speaks through your pastor. He th speaks through the word. He speaks uh, through your visions, believe it or not. And, and just be sure that if you have a vision, that it coordinates with scripture. That's why you have to know scripture. Now, because the devil will give you some visions too that maybe you shouldn't have. So you have to be open and understanding that you're going to listen to God. And that's the fourth part. But be careful that you're listening to God and not the devil at the same time. What a joy it is to know that you have an opportunity to be faithful in that conversation with God. And so let me remind you of some other verses that I uh, put down here, Philippians 4, 6, and we talked about this a little bit in our Bible class. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your request to God. But in everything by prayer. How about Romans 12, 12? Let your hope make you glad. Be patient in time of trouble. And never stop praying. Another one from Colossians 4, 2. He be, Paul begins the verse, never stop praying, and when you pray, keep alert and be thankful. So it's an attitude that you have uh, more than, uh, you know, you don't want to drive in your car and all of a sudden, uh, oh, I want to pray, close my eyes and fold my hands. But uh, it's an attitude that you are in the presence of God, that you ne never put a period of, at the end of your prayers. You just live out the joy and rejoicing, and uh, it's a constant contact with Jesus Christ and your Lord and Savior. The goal is not just to pray, but is to have that relationship with Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. The key element of a successful prayer is the presence and uh, the motivation of God given to you by the Holy Spirit. We pray very much that you, Jesus, you understand that Jesus is the key. He opened the door so that you could pray to the Father by what he has done and his relationship for you. So we, one of the greatest privileges you have is prayer, and what a joy that is to continue. One of the stories that uh, I've learned over the years is uh, a story from Africa. Uh, one village, a uh, missionary came in and ended up, the whole village became Christian and followers. Usually if you go to the leader of a tribe, what you do is get, convince him to become a Christian and the whole group becomes a Christian. So the, he'll say, okay, you're all Christians now. And, you, and we're told, in this group, we're told that you should each pray individually, and you know how the verse says, 
go in your closet and close the door. Well, how many closets do they have in these huts in the, build, in the jungle? Well, they didn't have it. So what they decided to do, the group, was to go and pick out a place in the jungle that they would each have their own private place to talk to God. And so they did that. But what happened was they, that the more they walked on their path to where they were praying, they killed the grass. All right? The grass died and so forth. And they could always tell whether or not a person was praying. Because if there was grass growing on their path, they knew that they hadn't been going to pray. And so they were told, they would come up to a person and say, hey, grass is growing on your path and you're there. And you've got to get back to praying. And that's what I'm saying to you, is don't let the grass grow on your path to pray. That's so important in your life that you continue a conversation with God. And to be thankful for Jesus in all circumstances. Now think of all the circumstances. Jesus is, to, you're to be thankful to him because he is the solution to all your problems. You are to be thankful that he is the escape from every temptation that you have. Jesus is the comfort for every sorrow that you have. He is the victory for every battle that you go through. Jesus is the wisdom for every decision that you have to make. Jesus is the hope for every tomorrow. He is the one that you go to pray to for help. That's the message that I want you to receive. And I want you to walk out our, our doors knowing that you're a child of God. You are sealed to Jesus Christ through your baptism and that you are going to relate to him by rejoicing, by praying, and by thanking God in all circumstances. For this is God's will in Christ Jesus. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. It's yours. We are, we are his, Bob. Thanks for reminding us. God delights to hear our prayer and pray for us himself, the Lord of the throne. So we're going to uh, worship the Lord with our offerings and also with our prayers. We'll take a moment to just see if there are any prayers we want to gather out of this worship group here. Any uh, needs or thanks we want to add today? Any other needs or thanks? Anything in the other worship services I need to report to? Family and friends, things mostly. Gary and Sarah Thomas were with us today because they've got a grandchild getting baptized elsewhere, so that was exciting. First there. Well, in a moment we're going to stand and uh, let's, uh, let's go ahead and do that. We're going to turn to page six for the commemoration of the faithful departed. On uh, page six on our bulletin here. Thank you. With God's people throughout his church, we too remember this day all those sinners whom Jesus summoned to himself in faith and by his own forgiveness made his saints. We were created by God to offer him praise forever. We were redeemed by Jesus, God's Son. We were filled with the Holy Spirit through baptism where God gave to us eternal life. We have been nourished in the company of his people through the Lord's Supper and through the Word. Let us give Jesus thanks for all those who have called home to himself in the days of this last year. He has summoned them out from his church here at Spiritual Warfare up to his church triumphant above that they too may continue in joyful service to him forever. Including... Barbara Lambia, Shirley Bush, Kay Logan, Dwayne Gerstenberger, Tom Malone.
and you're a wine guard. Jim Caleb. Shirley Sharpeter. Kimberly Bartolacci. Walt Dawson. Joyce Fatbauer. Marilyn Billingsley. Paulette Krenasek. Clayton Schnarr. Sandy Harris. Donna Shawis. Pete Tyson. Let us give God thanks that even as their bodies rest in the earth, their spirits today enjoy the heavenly crown that God gave to them in baptism. The Lord will come from heaven with the command, with the voice of the archangels, and with the trumpet of all of God. First, the dead who believed in Christ will come back to life. And then, together with them, we who are still alive will be taken in the clouds to meet the Lord. In joyful expectation for the resurrection of the body to life, we remember before you, O Lord, all those who have gone before us in the faith, who we now pause to name in our hearts. We thank you for the gift of faith, and we hold fast to the certainty of your promises. May their memory among us be blessed. May we follow in their footsteps of faith to your eternal presence in the heavenly kingdom. Bless us our faith and die in the Lord from now on. For they will rest from their labors, and their deeds will follow them. Amen. O blessed Lord, you have chosen to bless us. We do not deserve you. May we live out your blessing in every way, and be a blessing to others. Bless us by the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of God. Lord, when we are at the end of our rope, when we realize that we cannot rely on ourselves, even then, you bless us. We thank you, Lord, for blessing us with your gracious rule in our hearts. Bless us by those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Lord, when we experience grief, the death of dear ones, the loss of our dreams, when we are disappointed and discouraged, still you are with us. Thank you, Lord, for blessing us with your comfort. Bless us and me, for they will be the earth. Lord God, when you are giving to us the gift of being humble, modest, content with who we are and what we have, have we yet pridefully rebel, still be our rescue. By Christ, we inherit what we need. Thank you, Lord, for blessing us with meekness. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Lord, you have blessed us when we find no satisfaction in the things of this world. Let us feel full with nothing less than your joy, peace, love, righteousness. Thank you, Lord, for blessing us with a thirst for you. Bless us, Lord, for they will be shown mercy. Lord, you have blessed us with that desire, even the ability to care for one another. Show your mercy, Lord, especially to Debbie, Christopher, Lee, Judy, to Bethany and Mona, and Mary, for Randy, Sandy, Joe, Kim, Ken, and Don, care for those who we name in our hearts. Thank you, Lord, for blessing us with your mercy. 
Bless us in our pure heart, and they will see God. Lord, you have blessed us with your cleansing forgiveness. Bless now Bob and Alice as they turn to serve you. As you bless them, let them be a blessing to many as they share that forgiveness. Stop our wallowing, Lord, and guilt and impurities every day still more. Open our eyes clearly to see you. Thank you, Lord, for blessing us with pure hearts. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Lord, you have blessed us with the peace that this world cannot give. Let us, as your sons and daughters, share your peace with the trouble. Thank you, Lord, for blessing us with the heart to make peace. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Lord, can we be blessed when we are persecuted? When our deep love for you causes us to be hated by the world, through adversity and pain, drive us even deeper into your kingdom. Make us ever more dependent on you. Thank you, Lord, for blessing us even through persecution. Bless, Bless us, Lord Jesus. We rejoice and are glad in the blessing you give. We, we praise you.
do this as often as you eat it in remembrance of me. In the same way, Jesus took the cup after the supper began. When he had given thanks, he gave that to them, saying, Drink from us, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood that's shed for you, the forgiveness of your sin. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Blessed are those who are invited to the marriage feast of the Lamb. They will see his face, and his name will be on their foreheads. Faithfulness springs forth from the earth, and righteousness looks down from heaven. Come join the feast. I'm going to invite six or seven on each side to come forward and uh, receive the Lord's gift. I guess should say seven or eight, and then as some are singing, others will be singing the hymns here at the bottom of page nine.
We do give thanks for the body and blood of our gracious Lord. He has fed us, forgiven us, and renewed us. Let us go from this place as those who now offer everything to you, O Lord, and to one another. Amen. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you now and always. Amen. Amen. Thank mm -hmm. you.